Welcome to episode 12 of live.withcode.uk. Thank you to everyone who took part in last week's episode, which was all about um, creating a random story in Python. Particularly well done to Andrew from Fulford School. Um, you're our winner from last week's competition, so I'll get your prize and your certificate in the post as soon as I can. Thank you to everyone who voted for what to cover this week. We're going to look at encoding and encryption to make a little login system. So the idea is you've got three attempts to log in. If you get it incorrect all three times, it stops asking you. But if you put the username and password in correctly, um, which for now is a horrendously insecure um, admin and password, um, then it shows a secret message which is loaded from a file. So you can choose your own password, you can choose your own um, secret message. But the beauty of this program is it doesn't store the password in plain text. So in the code, um, it's always a really bad idea to store plain text passwords, because if someone gets unauthorized access to your code, um, then personal data um, is breached, which can have huge um, legal implications for you as a software developer. So notice in the code, we're comparing the password hash to a big long string of characters, but the program then um, uh, works out that if you type in password, it will generate a hash of that password and compare it with these. So a hash is an algorithm that will take a password or some data and generate um, an encoded hash version of it, but it should be pretty much impossible or very difficult to go backwards from the hash to the original password. It's always possible, um, but it's computationally difficult to do. So let's get started um, today. To begin with, we'll just make a really simple um, login system. Um, so we need to ask two questions. We need to say, um, what is your username? Oops. And we need to say, what is your password? I'm going to be consistent with capital letters. Remember, it's live coding, so you'll see all the mistakes that I make. But the idea is to let you into the thought processes behind the program. So we ask the question, but it's rude to ask the question without listening to the answer. So we need to store the value inside a variable. So username equals, we create the variables, and then we assign the values of those variables, the things stored inside them, to the return value of this function, the input function. Um, so uh, what have we got now? Bad input on line two. Oh, I've forgotten an equal sign. There we go. So we type in a username, we type in a password. And then we want to check and see if they've put the right username and password in. So we're going to use selection, which means using an if statement now. So if username is equal to admin, notice the two equal signs here. We use one to set a value and two to test if two things are equal, the same. Um, if statements always have a colon on the end. So if we type in the username as admin, we could say welcome admin user. So anything other than admin gets no message. If we type in admin, it doesn't matter what the password is at the moment, we've logged in. So what we want to do is make it so that you can only log in if you have the right password. Now for this, we need to understand Boolean expressions. Boolean means true or false, and an expression just means something you can write down with values or code or functions. Um, so a Boolean expression means some code that gives you a true or false um, response. So a question with a true or false uh, answer. So this is a Boolean expression. It will either be true or false. Either the username is admin or it's not. And then we need to say, and password is also equal to, and for now I'm going to put it in as plain text. So now if we type in anything other than admin and password, we don't get in. If we type in admin with the wrong password, we don't get in. If we type in admin with the right password, we're in. So it works, but it's horrendously insecure. One, because we've used an easily guessable password, um, but two, because we're storing that password inside your code. For now, we're going to ignore that and just make it so that we're looping around to have three attempts. So we're going to say um, four attempts in range three, which means all the code that we indent is going to be repeated three times um, so that we can have up to three attempts um, to get in. Uh, let's have a look. So if we log in um, four attempts in range, why is that not repeating three times? Let's see. Oh, because we're only asking the question outside of the loop 
and we need to ask the question inside the loop. So it's only this bit that was currently being repeated three times. So here we need to cut that, Control and X, and put that inside our loop. So let's see, we ask the question, we get it wrong originally, and then it asks us again. Now I'm gonna get it right, but notice although we're in, it's still asking for the username and password. That's a bit irritating. So we're just going to say, once we're in, we're gonna break out of the loop. Um, so let's see, we get it wrong. Now we get it right. And it stops asking us for the username and password now because this break means we're getting out of the for loop. Okay, now it would be nice if it said login attempt one, login attempt two, login attempt three. And our for loops means that you keep track of how many times you're repeating using the variable that we've got here. So we could say print login attempt and then use that. In fact, I'm going to make it singular for attempt in range. Um, so login attempt zero. Let's get it wrong a couple of times. You can see it increasing. Um, but I'd, I'd like it to say login attempt one, two, three instead of starting from zero, one and two. There's two ways of doing this. We could say attempt plus one, which would work. Um, but actually, I'm going to specify in the range function. I want to start at one and stop just before four. There we go. So login attempt one, we get it wrong, get it wrong. And then on the third attempt, we put in password. So it's reasonable, but we've still got that password stored in plain text in your code. And remember, anything that you save on create um, with code.uk um, is public. And we don't want people to be able to see your, um, uh, your login details. So um, the next thing is to be able to use a hashing algorithm to store a hashed version, an encoded version of this password instead. So Python uses um, hashlib to do this. Um, and let's see what um, is uh, supported inside hashlib. So dir lets you see everything inside an object. Um, we've got MD5 hashes, SHA1 hashes. You can Google all these and see which is the best. For our example today, we're going to use MD5 because the hashes are nice and short and I'm aware students are going to have to type out my code later on. But it's not recommended because it's um, it's not as secure as some of the others. I'd recommend um, SHA256 or 512, which are more secure hashing algorithms if you're going to do any, um, uh, uh, if you're going to use this in a production environment. Um, so, to generate your hash, for now, let's make a, um, a new variable called hash and use the hashlib module. Um, and uh, I'm going to use an MD5 hash. So MD5 is a function. You pass the password in as a parameter. And then that will return some binary data. So you need to convert it into a hexadecimal digest. Um, you'll see what that means when we display it. So I'm just going to put it on here. So username, doesn't really matter what I put in for now. If I put password in, this is the MD5 hash of password. Um, and if I put something else in, um, hello, this is the MD5 hash of hello. And they are different. So whatever you put in, there should be a different hash for it. Now, one of the reasons why MD5 is not a good choice is that it is possible to have a collision, which means you can have multiple passwords that have the same hash. It's very unlikely to happen, but it can happen and you don't want it to happen. Um, so now that we've worked out what the hash is, uh, in fact, I should run it and copy and paste it. So let's say, don't really mind at the moment, let's put password in and I'm just gonna copy that so that instead of comparing the password, we can now compare the hash with what we've um, copied here. And I'm not gonna bother um, displaying the hash anymore. So now uh, we put in admin, we put in an incorrect password and it doesn't let us in. We put in admin and the correct password and it does let us in, even though that password is not stored anywhere in your code. Um, so what we're going to do now is just make it so that instead of saying welcome admin user, it loads some data from a file. So let's make a file here. Um, I'm going to call it secret.txt. Now I'm aware that people could just open this file. It's not actually encoding the contents of this, uh, sorry, encrypting the contents of this file. I'll put that in as a poll option for future episodes if you want to know how to do that. Um, but I'm going to use a text art generator. I'll put a link on the saved code here. You can put in whatever message you like. I'm going to put secret message uh, and copy that. 
in here and let's put the link in so that you can have this when I save it. Um, there we go. So I want to load everything from this file and display it if you're logged in. So to load from a file, we need to use open and then the file name, which is secret.txt. And I'm going to use with open as F for file. Um, with just means it automatically takes care of closing the file afterwards. So we can use f.read. That will get the whole contents of the file. And I'm just going to print that on screen. So if we log in and put the correct password details in, it loads that message from the file. Um, but if you can't log in, um, it won't let you in. So today we've covered um, hashing algorithms. This is encoding rather than encryption because we haven't actually stopped anyone from seeing the contents of this file. We can look at that in a future episode if you like. Um, but there's a couple of challenges that you can work through if you're interested. Um, so let's put these down here. Um, you can replace my secret message with your own secret message. So generate your own. Uh, don't put anything actually secret or personal in there. Remember, if you save this on create.withcode.uk, it's public. Um, even though people won't know what your password is, they will be able to read your file. Use a more secure um, hashing algorithm. So replace MD5 with SHA256 or 512, but remember to uncomment this line and put the different version of the hash in here. And you can also put multiple if statements in. So as well as just the admin user, you could add different if statements loading different files for different people. Okay, so um, I hope that's helpful. Remember links to all of the activities, the type racer, um, the, uh, the K-Pride activities, uh, and the extension activities looking at selection. So if statements are all on live.withcode.uk. Do vote for what you'd like to come up in next week's episode. Thanks for watching. All the very best. Bye-bye.